Hi everybody, welcome back to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colin Way, and today it's all about the salt and pepper grinders, and more importantly, the crush grind salt and pepper grinders. So we're going to look at how we um, get through that one from the rough blank right the way to, hopefully, the finished item there. We've got Ben behind the, uh, the cameras. He's doing the switching for us, asking all the questions so you know the form, or if you've been here before you know the form, um, use the chat function, ask us as many questions as possible, and along the way, we'll uh, we'll try our best to answer them. Okay, so if you've never been here before, um, that's how we do it. We ask questions, and hopefully, we we'll, we we'll, uh, get the answers for you. Now, tomorrow, before I forget, and Ben's going to remind me anyway. But before I forget, um, we're going to do a bit of a Q and A tomorrow. So it's going to be a mixture of myself and Jason, and we're going to look at chucks, jaws, and centers. So if you have any questions that you're unsure about, or or things that you want to know about chucks, jaws, and centers, um, come along, ask us the questions there. We're going to focus on um, five of our favorite jaws as well. Um, and bear in mind, guys, that we know about Axminster chucks, jaws, and centers. Um, if you've got burning questions about other chucks, one ways, big marks, all those sorts of things, we may know, but we're not going to be as sure as we are about the Axminsters. So that's what we're here for, is to, is to promote and uh, big up our, our the stuff that we make right here in Axminster in Devon. So let's start the project. So I'm starting off with a beautiful bit of timber. There's a bit of elm, um, which is the same, come from the same plank as this one did. Um, this is uh, a lovely piece of elm. Um, it's got some really nice striking marks in there. Okay. Two parts, obviously. I haven't put the mechanism in this one um, because I've done this one this morning just to show you as an example. Um, so there's a, a, an awful lot to do with this one yet. We've got a lot of different drillings um, to do, and I think i'm sure that that will be the focus of a lot of questions and the drillings now if you're into making large numbers of um uh, salt and pepper grinders that sort of thing then you would have invested in um either uh, something like the mill drill which is what i'm going to use or um a series of force bits now or sorry sawtooth force bits um roughly the same amount of money for the same sort of quality so if you're going to invest good uh, money for a good sawtooth bit you'll need three to make these um these salt and pepper grinders they come to about the same amount as uh, as one of these it's over 100 pounds i'm not entirely sure the exact price but axminster if you're there if you could um, pop the links up or in fact we've got the links below this video so they are there um, but yeah, a, a good set of uh, sawtooth will will work out to be about the same amount as a mill drill. Um, however, I do need to use a, a sawtooth bit to guide that mill drill, and in this case, it's going to be a twenty five millimeter sawtooth, good quality. This is the fish one, and you can see the saw teeth um, here. So that's going to be the basis to run that mill drill down. Yes, Ben. Okay, so a couple of questions come in, Colwyn. Um, first one from Malcolm. Um, he understands that you're in Cardiff on Saturday. So um, going to be in Cardiff this Saturday. We're doing two presentations for the Robust Lathe again. It's going to be my last presentation on the on the machine, and, and certainly in, in terms of the stores. Um, in Cardiff, we start at 10.30, and roughly an hour and a half. Um, and then again, uh, we start uh, our second one at 12 o'clock. So, yeah, if you're in town... Um, come and have a look. I know there's a few people already booked in to see it, but um, come along anyway. There's plenty of room, and uh, we can answer all your questions on the robust lathes um, there and then. I will be doing a little bit of turning. There's not much turning happening, if I'm honest, because it's all about the lathe. I, I have one big chunk of um, uh, sycamore, I think it is, I've got. Um, that, no, it's ash, actually, that we're going to be putting on the lathe, but I'm just doing a toe congestion. We're not making a, pro a, a project as such, look, looking at the lathe. Yes, Ben. Um, regarding the weather, Trevor's saying, uh, change of plans, we need to turn umbrella handles. <laughs> um, and this from uh, Donna, is there an outlet in the USA for Axminster products? Yeah, there are. There is actually the woodturningstore.com in uh, New York. They're an online retailer for us there. Um, uh, they handle all of our um, Axminster wood turning products. So chuck centers, uh, all those types of things. You'll also see us if you're going to the AAW, come and look uh, look for our stand, the Axminster wood turning stand um, next to Chromacraft. We're going to be there supporting. Um, myself and Helen Bailey are going to be there on that one. And uh, we've got a few little secrets and some surprises to tell you about in the next few weeks and months in terms of states or the states. Um, and uh, along with myself and Nick Agar, we're going to be doing a few things there in the summer. So, yeah, watch that space. But, yeah, woodturningstore.com 
and uh, have a look at them online and you'll see all of our products there. All right. Okay, let's have a look then. So this is um, our piece of timber. I'm going to give you dimensions first. So my starting piece, this came as one piece, this lump of timber, 250 millimeters long. That's my start. And then I've cut this lump off at 170 mil. And that's going to be the bottom, obviously, of our grinder there. So the first things we need to do is we're going to rough it down to a, not to a cylinder, to a near cylinder, because I'm going to use a set of dove, what we call dove A, oh, sorry, A pluses, uh, which are these here. Okay, and we're going to hold the external surface whilst I drill the internal part of that out to that 25 mil. We are going all over the place with metric and imperial, those sorts of things, but um, I'll do my best to convert as we go. So, roughing down to a cylinder first, let's go to our medium size tool rest here. This is nine inch. And we're just going to skim that down to a cylinder. Um, this is going to be a completed pepper mill or salt mill, whatever you want to call it, when we're done. Um, the thing I like about these mills is that they're a ceramic. Let me just turn that off and show you a little bit closer. This is a ceramic mill, so it's a very, very long-lasting mill, um, a real high-quality one. All the bits are great. Now, um, in terms of uh, holding into our mechanism, we have little lugs here, okay, here and up here. So I'm going to cut some slots for those to, to line into, and there's a little tool that we can do. Um, or used to do that. So as we get along, we'll show you. So, lay speed to zero, turn the lathe on. Everything's all nice and tight. We've checked that already. And then roughing gouge down to, just knock the corners off, basically. There we are. Let me just have a check on that because I think already we're about right to grip. Because I know if I go down to a cylinder, the jaws I'm using are going to be um, too big. It's also the project's a little bit too big for the C jaws in this instance. So I want to, you know, I want to um, maximize our dust. There we are. So that's there now. This was cut from one blank, like I said. So I had a scribbled line here. We've got a scribbled line there. That's the way it goes back together when we join it. I've got to bear that in mind when I'm making this because I need to drill it in the right um, in the right ends when I'm making it. So that's going to have the smallest um, hole. So I'm going to swap him over just to clean up that end. Yes, Ben. Sorry, we had a bit of an unstable connection there, so it froze for a moment, but we're, we're back on again. Um, any really important information we went over there, Colwyn? Um, we might have missed? Um, so all we're doing at the moment is roughing down. I've got um, two sets of jaws that I'm choosing to hold these pieces in, the A-plus jaws. Um, so I haven't roughed all the way down to a cylinder because that would have made this piece too small to go in them. Um, if I did go down to a cylinder, it'd still be too big for the C-jaws, so that's, that's the reason I've gone this way however just make to suit your own jaws okay you don't have to copy the size that i'm going here yeah and then we've got a couple of questions in um hodgepodge says it would be great if you guys could make it um to the uh, swat event in texas um in august i i don't think jason's going to that one i can't make it this year but look out for next year that's all i can say um, but we're unable to do it this year because of other commitments, um, which I just can't talk about at the moment, but you will find out shortly. <laughs> Sorry, put you on the spot there. Um, Hodgepodge is asking, is the length critical for crush grind or can it be adjusted at all? It, yeah, no, it can be adjusted. Um, now, you can get these in four sizes, um, you know, differing lengths. Um, they can be adjusted because this is an aluminium shaft um just to prevent corrosion so you can cut that off and make it shorter um and i think they go on up to 300 uh, yeah 300 long as well so you can certainly make them shorter um so yeah they can be adjusted slightly and then turn from the tree is thinking about buying a robust tool rest and um, what are the pros and cons um, between the standard and the low profile tool rests um so comfort 
um, and the low profile. So what I've got here, okay, is the low profile. These are, well, we, let's just turn that one off. And the comfort ones have um, a shorter amount of material here. So if you're used to, I would say a spindle turner would be better not having this one, have one with a shorter amount of steel uh, here, because then you can run your finger along the tool rest as you uh, run along with a skew, for instance. But bowl turners that want to get their hands, you know, right the way around the, the, the bowl gouge, this is probably a better option for you. Um, in terms of spindle turning, I would always go for the shorter version than this, the smaller, the smaller, um, you know, amount of bed time up here. But yeah, though that's the only difference is the amount of beef left in the um, in, in the tool rest. And the bold baker would like to know what is the difference between the crush grind and the Axminster ceramic mill set. Um, just the way they're assembled. So these are a push fit where the axmen's the ceramic ones are, um, they're screwed in. Um, so that, that's the big difference for me because I'm doing quite a few. It's easier to use the crush crimes because I just go along at the end of the game, you know, tap, 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 tap. I don't have to mess around with screws and things like that. So for me, it's a little bit easier. And I, I love these. These are a, a nicely adjustable as well. So you can open and close um, the grinding area um, and just a, a nicer um looking um a nicer a nicer feeling um a, a component you know what i mean um my preference well uh, my my preference over the others big time really just gonna take out that last little bit of waste because that will throw this out of the chuck otherwise right that's that bit i'm gonna really speed things up now that's ready for the chuck um we're going to quickly pop this bit in, remembering, there we are. So I need to drill that size, so I need to clean this side up. You doing a few of these at a time, you get into a rhythm. I'm trying to remember, because we're just doing this one. I don't want to go down too far. We want to hold it in the C's, uh, the A's, sorry. There we are. That'll do us. Clean the end up. That should be enough. Okay, now we can start doing some little bit of drilling. Put that to one side just for the moment. And we're going to swap the center out for the drill chuck. We're going to use that one uh, inch or 25 mil drill. Sorry, not one inch. 25 mil drill. And this is the fish drill bit. This is 25 mil. Um, an inch probably i've never tried um using an inch initially in this because the uh the mill drill is designed to go into an inch it might be a little bit sloppy uh, sorry 25 mil so an inch might be a little bit sloppy when it goes in and that might generate a little bit of a little bit of um vibration so i would probably go well i definitely prefer to go for the 25 mil right there we are we're ready so all we need now is a chuck There we go. And then we're going to start. It doesn't really matter which side we're starting because I've cleaned both up. There we are. Just make sure we're all lined up nicely. And we are. Bring the controller over to me because I want to be working in this area now. So controller's over to me. The lay speed is zero. Turn the machine on. I am going to have dust extraction running as well. So let's go halfway is, is about there. As long as I go past halfway, then we can pick it up for the other side as well. 
running at a thousand revs. Don't worry if you get a little bit of screeching, that is vibration. So uh, usually when you pull out, you get that screeching. Make sure you keep the swarf clear as well. So just clear that swarf and you're going to have to advance the tail stock on. Very gentle. My left hand is engaged in that uh, that drill chuck all the time. The reason being is you just saw there, it just came loose from the Morse taper and I don't want to have that flying around. Nice and gentle. There is literally no rush at all. Let's clear out that excess shavings there we are and that is done so let's flip him over now at the moment i'm not worried about the fact that this might be out of um out of center if i take it out and put it back in again i'll show you why in a minute um we have a way of centering up which is quite quite nice so again back in the chuck Check to make sure it's centered. We are. Keep clearing that swarf. <clears throat> so we are all the way through. So if we just take that drill bit out a minute, it's going to stop the lathe, tap that out. Let me close off the extractor, answer some of the questions. So at the moment, you can't see through it because we've got a little plug, a little plug in the middle. So what we need to do, there we are. Now we've got a nice hole running all the way through. Look. Yes, Ben, questions? So we've got a few questions here. Uh, first one's from Martin. Um, are there any woods to steer, uh, stay clear of um, for use in the grinders, please? Well, well that's an interesting question because I've been asked this many times and I've made um, uh, salt and pepper grinders out of you and I've made them out of laburnum. And it does depend on the person you're selling them to because if people are allergic to any of those timbers, let's, first of all, um, we need to change or we need to understand the differences between a poisonous timber and an allergic reaction to a timber. So in terms of a poisonous timber, we're not grinding the timber and none of that timber is coming off on the peppercorns or anything like that. So that's one thing that we don't have to worry about. The burnum um, is poisonous in the flower. Uh, yew trees are poisonous in the seed that's in the pip and the, and the pines as well. Um, and just the cadmium lamb underneath the sap, once dry, um, you're fine. But it's allergic reactions that you do need to worry about. The allergic reaction to certain timbers um, then the U certainly can cause some some nasty ones. So be aware of things like that. I know Ben in particular, you're allergic to cedar and things, aren't you? So again, yeah. you, you know, you've got to think about things like um, that sort of thing. So um, no, I've made um, uh, numerous ones out of laburnum and U and things like that, um, and they're all oil finished, so they're sealed up um, and absolutely fine. But it's the aller the allergic reaction that I would consider more. Um, some people suffer really um, quite badly when it comes to things like you. Um, so you, you would need to check that, absolutely. 
Yes. And then Phil is saying um, that when we when we first got going, the the chuck was and the um, and the bit were wobbling a little. Um, will that self correct when the boring starts? Oh yes, because what we do. Um, who was that? Uh, that's Fuller. That's Finn. Uh, Fuller. Um, yeah. What we're going to do now is is do the boring. <laughs> with that hole as our center um so and then we're going to turn around that center so that it will become the new good center so absolutely you can see already i've put that back in the chuck and that's matching up really really nicely um that's not a coincidence that that is because it, it is self um self-centered itself if that wasn't i slacken the chuck off and line the hole up onto the mill drill and then tighten the chuck back up again um and then we again we're, we're assured of center that way yes and hodgepodge is asking is there any reason to apply a food safe finish to the inside of the grinder or just leave it natural well i tend to do that anyway so we've got a food safe um finish here this is the the chestnut um food safe oil um it's good to several reasons um you will have a little bit of dust residue on the inside when you finish and so a little washout with food safe oil is really good. Give it a, if you've got an air duster, brilliant. So you dust it out first, then a little scrub out with some food safe oil, um, and then wipe out with some rag, and then um, then you'll you'll you know you know you've sealed the inside also. So absolutely, I tend to do that as a as a norm. So we've got a couple more still. Cole, yeah, sorry. go for it. Um, Frederick says um, usually when he does that, he sets the fire alarm off. Uh, with the, the <laughs> you want to give your drill bits a sharpen, Frederick? <laughs> <laughs> I've been there though. I have, have I absolutely have been there. And to drill to sharpen your oil, you can see by this one here. This is a slightly bigger version. Um, you can see here is a little bit charred on the end, but a diamond file and light your chisels. Don't wait for it to go blunt. Keep it a good sharpen every now and again. Just keep it sharp, as opposed to wait for it to to go blunt before you sharpen it. And you can do both that front face and you can very carefully do that top face because there is a natural little angle across here between that and the saw teeth all right yes and then the bold baker's asking would cherry be okay cherry would be lovely I'm absolutely hundreds out of cherry yeah that real almondy sort of smell to it um, and it looks beautiful as well yes um callum's saying that um, they found that monkey puzzle that they turned from a tree when finished kept its shape well um, is that normal for that timber? Um, I, I'll be honest. I don't have a massive amount of experience with monkey puzzle. I've turned a few uh, limb sections. Um, Jason is your man when it comes to the bigger sections. Everything I've seen him turn in it um, has seemed to have held, held its um, shape, yes. Um, and he's turned a lot of thin stuff with it so to, to create a, a translucent bowl, for instance. Um, and they've all kept their shape. So, yeah, I think it's well, probably one of those anomalies um that, that's friendly to us you know right i'm going to bore this center out so i've got a little line on here that we're going to bore up to okay it's a, a a line that's made on the actual meal drill so we know exactly where to go to again we've got to clear the swarf one thing you've got to be absolutely 100 percent on here unlike the drilling with the drill chuck you are going to never put your hand on here to steady this because you've got two blades whizzing well they're not going to be whizzing around but potentially they could whiz around so you do not want to have your hand on that bit when you start drilling. It stays off, um, and we're going to start drilling. So let's get the dust extraction going again. The other thing I would say, if you get any screeching, and there is a potential for screeching on these, a little bit of your wood wax works really well, um, just to give a little bit of lubrication. So this is going to bore two holes for us just a little bit of swarf clearance before I plug that hole now there we are Just keep clearing the swarf.
And there we are, up to our line. Now, just for the minute, I'm going to take that take that away. Because what I'd like to do now is inside here, turn the extraction off. Inside here, obviously we've got a lot of dust there, which we'll get rid of. Um, but I want to just put a little, a little line, a little groove in there. That's going to support and stop the mechanism from coming back out. So when you push the two together, there's a lot of force against that mechanism. So there's little lugs here to stop that from actually coming out. So what I'm going to do now is just measure. Just get that little bit of dust out a minute. There we are. First of all, I'm going to measure that distance. There we go. And then I'm going to measure the distance overall to where the lug needs to be. And I'm going to add... So I need then to make that up to it's around about 48 mil. And I'm going to put a little measurement on my grooving tool here. Okay, so this is from memory. And then just do a little side cut. And that's gone in around about three mil deep. But that's created a little ledge on the inside. And I'll show you in a minute when we take this out. It's created a little ledge that those lugs can then click into. Well, I think that's that side done. I'm not going to worry about sanding, but it would be helpful to get some really coarse paper and just denib around the edges. But I want to take it out and just show you now because we're going to flip it around and just bore in what will be the top. Now, hopefully, get this so you can see. And if I tilt it, you can see that little groove right down the bottom there that that lug is going to sit into and stop it from moving. We're going to do this similar sort of thing in the lid as well. Right, so now I just need to do the top. This is going to accept the lid in a second. And whilst I'm doing that, I'll answer some questions. Okay, cool. And so we've got a whole bunch of questions again. Um, lots of questions with this project. Um First of all, for Walter, um, with on his iPad, where you see the little window at the top with the um, the studio YouTube, just hit the little kind of circular arrow. That will refresh it, um, and you should be able to watch. Um, so some questions here. Um, Maria sends, she noticed the bit that you sharpened had a lot of wood and resin stuck to it. Um, would you clean it off before another use or just leave it? No. If you're going to sharpen it, clean it off. Um, resin um, cleaner will help. Just simple mess and a toothbrush will do the same. Not your one that you use every evening, but uh, a sacrificial toothbrush. Just clean that off. Um, and that it's going to expose the tip at the end of the day, isn't it? It's like a router bit. It exposes the actual cutting area. Um, so, yeah, just give it a good gunk, degunk. All right, clean it off a little bit. Yeah, dead right. Yes. And then the bold baker's saying, um, you mentioned the length of the blank, but not the other dimensions. So I've got 75 mil as its thickness, so sort of three inch um, as its overall or diameter. And I think Fuller wants to, well, it sounds like they want to mill it. Um, does the taper of the boring head have threads for a drawbar? Let's have a look. It's not, it's from, me from memory, it's not something I've checked before, actually. I don't think so. No, it's solid. It's solid, unfortunately. All right. And then Elias is asking, what what speed is the lathe running? Uh, we'll have a look. I'm a, usually around about 1,000 for, for drilling. Uh, let me double check that. We're at lathe speed of zero, turn the lathe on, though. Um, and then around about 1,000. I think the instructions say about 900 revs. That's 1,000. 
Uh, Callum saying, um, yeah, I've got a few here. Callum saying um, they prefer their ground pepper coarse. Um, uh, can you recommend which kit to use, or is either of them adjustable? Um, no, the, um, I would always go with the crush grind. Personally, this is like I say, it just feels better when you use it, um, and it's fully adjustable. Um, I'm not sure whether the other one is. Um, I'm I'm entirely not sure on that one. Um, I know this one is, so you can really adjust it to get fine, um, a fine grind or not. All right. Yeah. For a minute. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> Thank you. There we are. So let's just, I don't need to go in half as far on this one. In fact, I'm only going the first cutter. Where's my mark? Um, I'll eyeball this. I'm only going in a short distance. It's around about 10 to 12 mil. There we are. That'll do us. Because all this is doing, this is done, isn't is um, a measured uh, depth. All this is doing is accepting um, the head. So it's going to accept the head to go into there so you can then turn it nicely. It's just a good seat, that's all. So that's prepped. If you're going to do a few of these, and you're going to be doing a minimum of two, I would have thought anyway, salt and pepper, um, Get them to that stage first before you move on, okay? Much, much easier. Whilst that's there, so we haven't done the turning yet, whilst that's there, we'll do the drilling for this one, the top. Okay, so we're not going to need the meal drill anymore. And we're going to go down to, let's use the, the inch again. Double check that. I'm going to use that one just to start with. Make sure I'm not mixing my bits up. Just let me measure the top of that mill drill a minute. Yep, that's fine. And so we're going in about five mil with this one. This is not very deep. Then we're going to swap that drill out and go to the smaller drill. This one is 24. Twenty-four, and this is the main hole now so the main hole for the top of the mechanism and i'll show you that in a minute so it's for this piece this is going to be the driving section of our cap Make sure you can see that swarf coming out. There we are. Give you an idea of the depth I've gone on this one. I went down. This is a pre-measured depth I, I tend to use all the time. There we are, 46 mil on that one. Yes, Ben. Um, so Maria in Wales is asking, um, would you risk sticking a small skew inside to do the recess? Um, it's, um, it's a square recess, Maria. So I couldn't get the skew, the angle in there correct. Um, just a little side box scraper might work as well. Um, but that, that tool... So you can see it there is perfectly set up to get that, that little square recess because it wants to create a square shoulder that those logs can't pull back out on. Um, I just couldn't do it with the skew. Um, so I'm just going to tidy up that end. Just a little tidy and that's us done. Yes, Ben. 
Um, so j- just uh, mention Hodgepodge is trying to sell their wares. They've got about uh, a couple of dozen of these. <laughs> and um, you can be used for things like mustard seeds, cumin, coriander. There we are. That'll do. Just tidying that up. And that is ready well, that one is ready to go in a minute we're going to do the body first though because i want to make the, the head match the body as it were so we've got everything ready it's just the nice bit left it's the the shaping and the sanding that left left to do next i'm going to change my chuck now because i've got some or i've made some drive dogs up out of timber that fit the sea jaws not these big jaws so we're going to swap that over and now most other things are going to be done then using using the seas There we are. My drive dog in this case is a piece of cherry. Okay. And it's tapered down. Uh, ha, 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 that's my old one. Ignore everything I've just said, because that one doesn't fit the sea jaws either. Either That one does, in fact, fit the seas. They're the bays. There we go. The other drive dog we've got is going to fit the seas. So that's now going to, because it's a taper, it's just going to slot onto the bottom. And then on this end, we're going to have a tailstock. It doesn't really matter. Single pointed tailstock center or ring center. It's going to slot, it, slot into the 25 mil hole. Now you're free to turn. You'll, you know, it's just almost like a light pull, really you know that the hole is going to be centered. So whatever you turn is around that, that center hole. So we're going to carry on roughing down first. I am going to put dust extraction on, and we're going to go through the process of turning the whole thing now. So dust extraction on, rough roughing um, gouge out first. I can up the speed a little bit, so we're up at 1800 there. Let's go for our three quarter roughing. Now I can go down to a cylinder. And whilst I'm there, I'm taking the worst out with the roughing gouge, or the bulk of the material out first. And now I can work on the details. So my design tends to have a couple of beads. So if we get to the skew, tidy up that surface first. Nice little V cut. Not too deep because I haven't got too much material left. And then after the V, after this V cut, I tend to go for a fillet. So just a little flat section. We'll do that with a beading and parting tool as we round these beads over. So here's your fillet. There we are. Right now, let's start the main shaping. I'm going to do this with a bowl gouge. I had a question in the week, actually. Um, someone saying that they're watching my videos and I tend to go for the bowl gouge over the spindle gouge. It's just the way I've been brought up. It's my my background really I, I do like using the spindle gouge but i seem to find that 
The bowl gouge removes a lot more of the material, a little bit quicker. But to be honest with you, it's the same cut. You're still getting that bevel rubbing. There we are. So on here, we're going to have a little round over into a V cut. I'll do a little skew cut with the bottom of the gouge. Here we are. And then before we go any further, I'll create the V. And then carry on with our cove. There we are. We're, we're sand that in a minute. Um, I'm going to round over this area here. We don't, this is a sharp point. This has got to be a half bead. Otherwise, it's going to be uncomfortable to use. There we are. I still think that cove needs a little bit of work. That's better. Right then, now we can start sanding that area. Get rid of these tools. And we can do that fairly quickly. We'll start with 100 grit, work our way through, and then apply some of that food safe foil. Yes, Ben. Okay, so. Um, thanks, Colin. Um, Alan's asking um, about the, the, the leg, the 406. Um, he says that um, they have a problem when they lock down the headstock. It dips at the centers, putting it offline about three mil from the tailstock. Is there a fix for that? You, um, when the headstock's locked up. So when the yeah when they lock the headstock, it's almost as if the um, the headstock dips. All right, no. Um, send in some pictures, please. I'd like to see what the how what's happening and from the headstock end and the the error um as long as he's on a flat and level floor um i don't know of any reason why it should dip there might be a reason why you get a sort of sideways movement but not not a dipping uh, motion yes and then frederick's asking is there a reason why you don't turn the body round in the first place and hold it in the c or g jaws um, the C's would have been too small, so the body would have been too um, big to go into the C jaws. They would have been to its expansion, meaning only the corners would have gripped. That would have dug into the timber. The, the um, A pluses were uh, the, yeah A pluses were perfect for the size that I was doing. Um, and to be honest, you know, we took the corners off. It was it would grip enough for the um, process we were doing. And Maria says, with a couple of extra cuts, that could look like a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Right, March. We're doing a penguin in March. I'll tell you what, the 8th of March is going to be a penguin. I might have to um, email you, Maria, for some tips. Right, 100 grit to start with. 8th of March, Ben, log that in. We're going to do a penguin. It's 
hope it doesn't turn out like the Weeble Wobble did. So this is 100 grit, so this is going to take the bulk of the um, sanding and then the other grits just basically just take away the previous grits marks. There we are, so 150. We're going to go 150 to 4400. It, this won't require a 600 grit. It's not that type of project or that type of timber. Um, and you could add in a 320. A lots of people say, why on earth don't you use 320? Absolutely, you can do. If I was using a timber such as maple or uh, walnut, then I'd have to use a 320. It wouldn't allow that big jump in grades. There we are, so 240. There we are, a bit of 400. Pretty, pretty timid. There's a lovely green streaking going on in there as well, which is which is nice. So a little bit of food safe oil. All the color jumps out, of course. Don't forget, if you have any ideas, keep sending them in to Woodworking Wisdom. We got a good idea from our very own Fiona here, Cohen. Go for it. Maybe you could um, do it like an owl, and the owl's head turns on the top. I've already committed to a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, dances with the parks would like to know: um, Can you make these about two foot long, like the ones used by, <laughs> wait by waiters in the nineteen eighties Italian restaurant? If you found the kit big enough, yes, you could do. Um, drilling might be an issue. You might have to go for extensions and things like that. I get where you're coming from, though. Lay speed to zero. Turn the lathe on because we got wet oil on there. And I just like to sand it in the oil. Um, obviously, it's not going to dry before we finish today. But this will really speed things up a little bit. This creates a, an oil and dust slurry, which fills the grain. So it gives a really nice um, feel to the piece afterwards, sort of silkiness to it. It's a little bit like wet sanding, really, with water. You're raising the grain. You're then taking it off with the abrasive. And then we're going to burnish hard with shavings and buff with some tissue. Same way that we would do bowls, really. And if you can find some nice curly shavings instead of these chippy ones, they're even better. But we want to get heat into the piece. That's the idea. You're forcing the, the drying of the oil. There we are. A little bit of, of a burnish with some clean, dry cloth. And then we're just going to put this to one side whilst we turn the top of the grinder, and then we'll assemble. Yes, Ben? Um, this from the bold baker, Colwyn. Um, could you use a mineral oil as the food safe oil? Yeah, well, food safe oils generally are the um, mineral type oil. Um, I know certainly the, the chestnut one is. And they're clear, they're odorless, they're colorless. Um, so, they're, yeah, very, very good option. So, absolutely. Check. I mean, there's lots of oils out there. Some of the citrus oils, some of the nut oils. You've all, all obviously, 
not obviously, but you've always got to be a little bit careful about um, allergies and just let anybody that's buying the piece um, or you're giving it to know what you've covered it with, know what the timber is, so they can then make their their, their judgment knowing what their their own allergies are, you know. But there we are. There's the 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 bottom of our grinder ready to be fitted in a minute. Okay, a fairly simple bit of turning, but it just takes a little bit. It's like pen making. It takes a little bit of preparation to get to it in the first place. Right. Okay, so now let's do the top. So I'm gonna, I am gonna change chucks this time because my drive dog is a smaller one, and that will be held in the C jaws. Now, before, before I mount that one, and I always like to check just to make sure everything's running true, because if that's not running true, nor will your project be, and that's looking pretty good. That can go on. Oh, he's a bit loose on there. That's, in that case, turn him down a little bit more. And again, like the other drive dog we use, this is a very fine taper. Um, we don't want to... Uh, a solid uh, parallel section there because if we have that then it's either loose or it's uh, or it's tight we want it to be jamming up nicely it should be all right now lovely Okay, and then the tailstock center just to make sure everything's nice and and in in line. There we are. So down to cylinder again, onto the roughing gouge. We're going to make a little tenon here as well. That's just why I've taken that, that in a bit down a little bit. So just down to the cylinder again. Once we're down there, then I can work on the tenon. The tenon has to fit inside here. So I'm going to double check it. Um, get your calipers to start with. Check the diameter of your recess. And then you can do your, your cut. So we're down to our diameter. Just going to make it a little bit deeper. There we are. Let's just have a quick check. Yes, Ben. Okay, so uh, a couple of questions in. Um, first one from HodgePodge. Um, do you ever fit the top and bottom together to, um, to turn? Um, to ensure the proportions are nice, or do you just do it by eye? I used to. I now just do it by eye. Um, 
the reason being that I've cut to the same dimensions for so many years now. Um, I know roughly where I'm going with everything. So yeah, as long as I take this down to the maximum diameter, um, I have usually around about three quarters of waist at this end um, and then shape it to that. It usually works. So, uh, but I get where you're coming from. Absolutely. You can, you can put these together like that now, sandwich them and then start shaping. Um, but no, I tend to do them apart because I do them in, in big batches. And then a quickie from turn from the tree. Um, are you using the comfort or the low profile um, robust tool rest there, Colin? This one is the low profile one. So it's the one with the, the bigger amount of steel in the top. A oh, little bit needs to come off of here. Not much, just a little bit. What we don't want is a, t a fit that's so tight when you turn, well, it's, it, it makes it hard to turn and screeches. It needs to be loose enough to turn easily, but not rattle around. Okay, so there's a, a real combination between the two. Um, bowl gouge again. Let's go small bowl gouge this time. So I've got where I drilled two, which is right there. So you, I've got plenty of room there because I do want to take a little bit of the depth away. There we are. That should be enough. So just a little nip away with a skew. There we are. Then we're down back to sanding. That little taper there holds that really nicely. Just stop and double check to make sure everything's okay. And we're all good. So, and again, the same grits. We'll start with a 100, go to 152, 40, 400. You can decorate the tops of these if you want to. You need a way of distinguishing which is salt, which is pepper. So you can either decorate, you can put a little paraffin mark in the top, literally salt and pepper. You can color code them with resin. You can do all sorts of these. Um, you could even go very, very simple and do what we've done here and just put some little lines in the top, maybe um, lines for pepper or none for salt, whichever you want to do really.
There we go. And then a bit of 400 just to finish it off. You are going to obviously spend a lot more time than I'm spending there. So then a little bit more. Don't worry. If you get any on there, it makes no difference. It doesn't swell the grain up that much as long as you've given yourself a good fit at the beginning. <clears throat> and if it does, just put it back on that little jam chuck and, and just take a little skim off. Um, that's soaking in nicely. A little bit of a gentle sand at low speed. Yes, Ben. So just going back a step, Colwyn, um, for the to measure the recesses, Fuller's asking, wouldn't it be better to measure the recess with the internal calipers and then transfer the dimension to the external calipers uh, to give you the correct size? Yes, yeah, sounds like a plan. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, if that works brilliantly. And then we got some really good ideas from everyone um, concerning the salt and pepper using different species, so like a walnut or ebony for pepper, maple holly for salt. Yeah, 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 I love um, it. And Malcolm inserts a bead in the top with, um, with the S and the P. One thing I've forgotten to do, just as a, a, f uh, a flush of... Uh, regret came over me then as I remembered, oh, you've forgotten to do that. Um, I forgot to put the recess in here. It's exactly the same way as i done the body um, with the recess tool. Measure where that recess needs to be cut. Um, and on this one, you can see it's probably easier actually on here because it's not such a distance. So there's that little um, nib that needs just to be held in there. So yeah, I've forgotten to do that on here um, and I can't re-hold it again. So gonna have to be another top now on that one but let me show you let me put it all together so we've got um got a finished piece yes ben whilst i'm doing that you can be asking <laughs> um so turn from the tree i think they missed it last time what what was the robust um tool rest that you were using was it the comfort or the low profile i think this is the low profile i think I'm, i'll have to double check that but i believe that's the low profile. basically this is the one with a bigger amount of steel here if you're into spindle turning, go for the one with a smaller amount of steel here, whichever it's called. But I think this is the low profile. Okay, I think the comfort one is the one where you can get your fingers around the um, around the steel. But but I'm I'm probably about ninety percent positive on that one. Okay, so what we have is our mechanism. Okay, there it is. So that has to go in there. That has to go in there and then this little white bit here goes in the top so let's just do the bottom first um which is the best angle here ben uh if i can get all this out of the way and bring this up look what i've got is this sacrificial well, it's not a sacrificial bit of timber it's my little um assembly jig i suppose so it's got a hole running all the way through it and um, the reason i've got the hole running all the way through it is what i want to do is invert that to be able to push this through okay and tap that in and if i didn't have that what would happen this little um lug would come through and start damaging on the the bed or the bench so i'm going to use another little jig i've made this one here just a little recess that fits over this delicate part of the ceramic mechanism and pushes only on the surround here okay and that will push us in nicely and a couple of taps with our mallet should get that down to the lug. And the little click, so that's in. Okay, that then gives us that amount of protrusion there. So then that can be inverted that way. And then our, what I've done on this bit, this is a little recess. I don't know whether you can make that out in the camera, but a little domed um, or a curved recess and a little bit of that router matting that is not not for um for anti-slip that is just to protect um the top as you 
tap in this next section. Okay, again, so that's in there nice and flush because we've done two holes, remember, didn't we? We've done the, the 25 mil and then we've done the 25, uh, 24 to take the, the rest of it. And then it should simply then slot together. Okay. Your adjustment is down here. You can see, if I get that really close to the camera, you should be able to see a, a little line there, a bigger at one end and smaller at the other. Okay, that's just adjusting the amount of uh, particles that come out, or size of particles that come out. There we are. Nice little pepper grinder. Yes, Ben, let's do some questions before we finish for the day. Um, would it be possible to vacuum chuck the top to cut the recess? Uh, I don't know whether there's enough surface area, but I've no experience with that, so I wouldn't – I'm not talking for experience, but it's only a small amount of surface area. I'm not sure whether it would take it, um, which is – it would have a little bit more practice when making another top. Um, and Frederick saying some people glue the mechanism in to save cutting the recesses um, yeah. could work. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the recess, you can make your own recess tool if you want to. Um, that was really, it's really easy. It's really quick. Um, it does save a little bit of messiness. That's the only thing, Frederick, is the messiness with it. But yeah, no, you could do. And then just other suggestions like jam chuck, like you do with your fruit and things like that. Jam chuck's a good way, actually. That would probably work. That was um, from Trevor. Probably get it in there. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, if I'm honest, that would probably work on its own anyway. Those those springs really push out against the timber. Um, if I found taking that apart that it came out, then obviously I'd have to do something about it. Um, fortunately, that didn't that time, so we're okay with that. But yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, there we are, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that one. Another a little bit longer than an hour, that one. Um, now, don't forget tomorrow, Chuck's um, centers and jaw questions. We're going to focus on five of mine and Jason's favorite jaws, um, and it's going to be both of us answering the questions. Come along, ask us um, questions about the Chuck's, about the centers, uh, and about the jaws, if you have any questions. We are going to have a few examples of work um, that we would hold in different types of jaws. So, uh, yeah, please come along for that one. Prime with questions. If you have any questions now, email them into us so we have some to, to start with um, and just fire questions with us uh, or to us on the day. So don't forget, if you've liked what you've seen, give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, all the usual things. But until tomorrow, um, I've been Cohen, and thank you very much. Bye-bye.